We just got a huge update for Call of Duty Black Ops 6. For the first time, it is not just progression changes and things along those lines. This time, weapons have actually been adjusted and much, much more. This is a full download for PlayStation for Battle.net, and I believe it's called Update 1.06. And in today's video, we are going to be diving in and taking a look at everything that has changed within this update. This is something we do pretty much whenever there is a title update for Call of Duty Black Ops 6 or any previous games before that or Warzone or anything along the lines. So if you want to stay up to date, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn notifications on. But without further ado, Let's dive in to these patch notes. Let's actually take a closer look. So here it is, patch notes for November the 4th, 2024. First off, stability. Improve stability when interacting with the message of the day and stability when sending voice communications. Why? I don't know. Progression. Completion display will now properly appear when completing prestige challenges in both multiplayer and zombies. Operators. Addressed an issue where Bailey wasn't holding an intended pistol in the operator selection menu. As far as progression goes, the one one thing that I would like to see them add is the tracking that Modern Warfare 3 had. So as you're going through challenges, you can pick like three challenges that you can track in game. I miss that. Interesting thing here. Maps. Nuketown. Nuketown is now available in private matches. So here's what's weird about this is this was actually done on Saturday. I streamed trying to find the Easter egg, but they have put it in the patch notes and this might be something that I have to dive into later today. So stay tuned. There may be another video going up later today modes and addressed an issue where players were spawned in when joining a session in progress instead of spectating before selecting a loadout. Yes, we saw ourselves in a kill cam before selecting a loadout too. Improved stability in infected game mode and then spawns. General spawn logic tuning across several maps for improved spawning. So spawns were one of the biggest issues people were having with this game along with recon. Don't worry, we'll get to that. And uh, they've addressed it. It said spawn tuning will be an ongoing process of taking in data, reviewing gameplay and making measured adjustments in the live environment. Our number one goal is to always provide the safest spawn that we can across all maps and modes. Loadouts addressed an issue where players would automatically acquire Equip their previously used loadout when joining matches already in progress and addressed an issue where players would die at initial spawn when selecting their loadout. It's a weird one. Now, weapons. It's been awesome seeing players discover and share their favorite weapon builds during the first week of launch. Every day we monitor both player feedback and game data to keep tabs on how the weapon meta is evolving and prepare for comprehensive tuning paths in Season 1. So, much bigger weapons tuning in Season 1, uh, but we have seen the discussion about the relative balance of assault rifles and submachine guns, and we are making some early general changes to adjust their effective ranges for for ARs. We are pulling in minimum damage ranges and lessening the impact of headshots at close range. SMGs are receiving damage range increases to improve their mid-range damage effectiveness. Okay, so first off, we have the XM4. The maximum damage is now 21 instead of 22, and then the range has actually increased up to 16.5 meters. So that's actually a pretty big change there. Medium damage down to 20, but the range got reduced to 40.6 meters, and then the minimum remains the same, uh, but that range where it starts is uh, earlier. Then we have the AK-74. As far as this one goes, the damage got dropped by one, but the range, huge, huge buff. And honestly, I think this is an overall buff to the weapon. Then... Uh, there is no medium uh, damage range, so it because that range is so long, and then drops off to 22 damage at 38.1 meters. The Amy's they drop the damage by two on this one, but massively increase the range. No medium range, as well as 17 damage remaining the same at long range. The GPR this gun already sucked, and it kind of got nerfed. The damage got dropped to 21, but the range only increased a little bit. Uh, the medium damage is 20 up to 45.7 meters, and then the the long range damage remains the same. The Model L, the damage got dropped by two, but the range up to 44.5. So they are clearly trying to make these do less damage up close, but do damage over a longer range. But the long range damage for the Model L got buffed to 22. And of course, that long range is at 44.5 meters. 
The Goblin MK2, the damage got dropped from 39 to 37, but that range went up to nearly 40 meters, um, and the long range damage remains the same. The Val, the damage got dropped to 20, but that range got increased. The medium damage went down to 17, that's a nerf, and the long range damage remains the same. So you can see what they're trying to do there, extend the ranges, but nerf the damage. Um, Kind of as you expect from assault rifles, but when we get into submachine guns, this is where things get interesting as well. So starting out with the C9, really the damage remained the same, but all of the ranges increased. So damage the same, but the range is higher. The CSV damage remains the same, but the ranges get longer. For the Tonto, this one, uh, only the medium range one and medium range two increased, but the damage remained the same. The PP919, we have the same damage, but increased ranges again. Only a small increase at the short range. Um, pretty much all of the ranges only got a small increase. And then the Jackal PDW, same kind of thing. Basically like one meter under each range. And then the Compact 92, same sort of thing. So the damage remains the same, but the range gets a little bit longer. And honestly, from what I am seeing here, assault rifles are going to be much worse up close. However, the, as a whole, the long range of these is going to do much better, which as a whole, most of the maps are pretty small. So I'm torn on this one, but those short ranges getting extended from 8.9 meters to 44 meters is pretty strong. So we're gonna have to wait to see how this affects in game. But honestly, I don't feel as though this is enough for the SMGs. Like for example, uh, the one that most people are using the C9, this is like a 0.5 meter range increase. That's not gonna do anything. So I don't see SMGs getting any better, but it's going to adjust um, the ARs for sure. So shotguns, the Marine SP, slug attachments, max damage reduced. So that's a nerf there. ASG 89, slug attachment, uh, max damage reduced as well. Those were broken. They were really, really good. Now the shotguns are much, much worse. Perks, recon. I've tested this in game, so we're gonna come back to this. Reduce the duration that enemies are highlighted after respawning to 1.5 seconds down from two. Uh, an additional reduction will be coming before season one. So in other words, they're like, we've already finished this update, um, but we're putting it out and we're nerfing it again. Uh, they also resolved an issue that allowed players to activate recon combat, especially by changing loadouts. So that was broken in search and, search and destroy hugely. Uh, dispatcher increased the dispatcher perk score for UAV to 500, uh, 550 and increased the perk score for counter UAV to 600. Equipment flashbangs reduced tactical screen effect duration by 20%. Thank God. I felt like I constantly couldn't see in game. Um, score streaks, increased UAV and counter UAV health, uh, rockets to destroy remain unchanged. So it's just shooting it with your gun is not as easy anymore. Increase initial explosion radius of the napalm strike. So a buff to that reduce the initial entry delay of the LDBR. So a slight buff to that as well. Increase the fly speed of the strategic bomber. So buff to that and reduce the score cost for interceptors to 1150. I'm assuming because nobody is using it. Movement updates. Adjusted stance change cooldowns to reduce effectiveness of the repeated prone to stand movement. Uh, enough snaking, so they're nerfing snaking. XP earn rates, adjusted player XP and weapon XP earn rates for most modes to ensure that players are being rewarded for their match performances as expected wherever they play. These changes include increased weapon XP earn rates for most modes, increased player XP earn rates for the following modes, team deathmatch, control, search and destroy, and gunfight. Uh, I think all of those pretty much needed it. Uh, slight decrease to player XP and weapon XP earned in face-off modes because that was pretty much the best way to level up before. So yeah, addressed an issue where players were able to complete the nuke challenge while dying. Um, odd. Appropriate perks will now display when viewing the featured player during best play. Okay. Gunsmith, uh, no one issues. We are investigating an issue where uh, any equipped optic attachments is removed when entering the gunsmith in the main menus. This happened to me after this update was downloaded and never happened to me before this. So I guess they knew this update was going to do it. Players will not notice any issues. During the match, players can equip uh, optic attachments, but will need to re-equip them anytime they enter Gunsmith in the main menu. Yeah, so that just happened. That with this update went out. And then Zombies UI Gobblegum names will now properly update when switching between their tabs. So, basically everything that I have said in videos 
in regards to things that need to be fixed, except for skill-based matchmaking and sweaty lobbies, has been addressed here. Recon, and it's getting nerfed harder within Season 1. Actually, they said before Season 1. Um, weapon changes, that, that happened. I don't see that making too much meta change in the game whatsoever. Um, on top of that, flashbangs getting nerfed. Thank God, I still don't think it's enough, but hey, it's something at the very least. Um, and yeah, they are doing it. They are doing the thing that I asked them to do. Honestly, unthinkable that this soon after launch, they are already addressing the main changes. I'm happy to say that, and I hope to see this continue throughout the year. On top of this, we got some information on Season 1, which I will either have in another video today or tomorrow, or whenever we get more information, and I have to go look into Nuketown. So, if you've been enjoying the videos on the channel, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, turn notifications on, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, peace. We are, we are